So I'm going to save here. All right. And now we're going to load game. And we're going to load here. Now we're going to go back to our... Now we're on our, our Yuri timeline. Now, so what we've done right here, ladies and gentlemen, we've pulled the... <clears throat> we've pulled the old future trunk sudo. So now there are two timelines splitting. Similar, but split. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We have parallel worlds. It's all Gucci, baby. It's all Gucci, baby. All right. So now we're back on the Yuri train. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expect this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a ple pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. By the way, speaking of Monica, what the fuck did she tell Sayori? Huh? Fucking Monica better mind her own goddamn business. Ooh, ooh, Kagu. I don't trust, trust you, fucking bitch. By the way, there's no fucking music right now. There's always music. You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. It must be the one she's... Oh, this is not good. This is not good. She prepared that it has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So, that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think one that on this day, on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Ha ha ha! You should take a little responsibility for her, ooh, Kagu. I mean, especially after your exchange with her... How does Monica know about that? Kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But, Stammer embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me re really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Very interesting, Monica. Very interesting. Hmm. Uh, Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. Grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. Flip through the pages. Each member's poem is ne neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's. Okay, that was my bathroom. I'm like, what the hell is that sound? Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I've led to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's, the, it's one that I haven't read before. Whoa. Percent. Get out of my head. 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 Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving.
what did Monica tell you? And it just stops moving. Uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Ooh, Kagu? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem, poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Calls that out after me. I quickened my pace. She's dead. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Yeah, she's totally dead. She's totally fucking dead. There's no music. It's fucking sad. Get out of my head. The poem is her life! <laughs> Unless the poem stops moving. Even the simple gesture of walking to her school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what, and what I want to give her. Oof, I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Is that kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. What the fuck? You fucking did this. Wow, thanks, Bubbles. File game script. Check the files. Okay. File, game, script. This is just sad. Open with. See traceback text for details. Line 307. Hold on. Oh, fuck. Hold on. Someone get bits. Let's hang out Sayori's down! Nice, that's Jay Cloud. So the file says... Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality is a writhing, twisted mess of dread. Loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt, all thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host. Seeping through every little crevice they can find into their willpower, starving them all of motivation and desire. Into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food or into a newly opened gash in their skin hidden only by sleeves of a cute new sh shirt such a deplorable tangled mass is already present in every single one of them that's why i choose not to blame myself for their actions and then it's just a bunch of messed code hold on let me see if i can okay here's more i can't do anything nothing no matter how many times you play, it's all the same. It would be really, really easy to kill myself right now, but that would mean I don't get to talk to you anymore. All I want is for you to hate them. Thank you for the 100 bits, Spader Base. Why is it... Why is that so hard? 
I'm scrolling down for more. Sayori's winning words. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that's cheating. I can totally see... I can totally see the winning words. Holy fuck. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm gonna use that if I ever do another playthrough. Scrolling down for more. Seeing if there's more. I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. Uh, no, nothing there. What the fuck is this game? And then a bunch of fucking code. Alright, we made it to the end of that file. And it wants me to open C traceback for details. Traceback. Game script. But this is just a bunch of file. Hmm. But an uncut exception occurred. Okay. Check the characters. Sayori's character is gone. Sayori's character file is gone. That's fucking wild. Um, I'm gonna keep playing now. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. It's all right. We have an altered timeline. It's fine. It's fine. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that's everything w that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could it be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes my ears. Ah. What did I do to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 Oh! Fuck! That's the end?! Uh, whoa!